a fundamental concept that we need to uh, introduce and take into account if we want to study the forces and effects of the forces on a particular object is the free body diagram. If we want to know what's the effect of all the forces on that object, the first thing we need to know is all of the forces that are acting on that particular object and then find the net force and then once we have the net force use Newton's second law f is equal to mass times acceleration where f is the net force and then find the acceleration. What is the free body diagram? Well it's just a scheme, it's a, it's a drawing where we are going to put, include all the forces that are acting on that particular object. For example, let's do this example. Let's assume that on an elevator of 700 kilograms, it is applied a force upwards of 5,000 newtons. So we have a mass of 700 kilograms, which we know that there's going to be a weight related to that object, and the weight is going to be pointing downwards, but we have a 5,000 newtons going upwards. So the free body diagram will be something like this. We have the elevator and the forces we will have a weight here, which is pointing downwards, it is a vector, and we know that this is mg minus j, and so mg is the magnitude of the weight, the mass times g, where remember that g is 9.8 meters per second square, and this is the unit vector pointing downwards, remember that we will use x and y, and the unit vector in the x direction will be i with an arrow and the unit vector in the y direction will be a y, sorry, a j with an arrow. So this is the weight and now they tell us that there is another force which we will call it f which is 5000 newtons j arrow. So it's pointing upwards, this force is pointing downwards the weight. So this is the free body diagram. We have all of the forces here, all the external forces, not the internal forces, not the forces between the molecules of the structure of the elevator, but just the external forces. The weight, which is due to the Earth, is Earth is the one that is inducing this force, and the force that we have from the rope just pulling the elevator up. Now, let's calculate the acceleration on the elevator. In order to calculate the acceleration, we are going to use Newton's second law. That tells us that the net force is equal to mass times acceleration. Let's find the net force. The net force is going to be F plus W. And I will go into the details of the sign of each one of these forces now. So the force, we know it, it's plus 5,000 and this is minus mg with the unit vectors. Yep, so I only have motion in 1D just going up or going down. So this is 700 multiplied by gravity and that's the net force. Negative 1 1860 Newton and the force the net force is pointing downwards now I want to calculate the acceleration so I use Newton's second law and I solve it for a where the net force is minus 1860 and the mass is 700 and this gives me minus 2.66 meters per second square. So the elevator is accelerating downwards with this acceleration, 2.66 meters per second square. Now, if the acceleration acts for two seconds and the elevator is initially going up at four meters per second, how far will the elevator travel while accelerating? Okay, in order to solve this, now that we know the acceleration of the motion, we only really need to use our kinematics equation. So the force is telling us what the acceleration is going to be, but once we know the acceleration, then we can use all the equations that you, we used previously. So let me erase this. We know 
from initial data we have that initial velocity is 4 meters per second. I'm not going to write if it's in the y-axis. I'm going to assume I know that that's just 1d, it's in the y-axis. Delta t is 2 seconds, which is the time that the acceleration is acting. And the acceleration, remember, we just calculated it, is minus 2.66 meter per second squared. We use the equations of kinematics. Delta y is v0 t plus one half of a t squared. So that's the equation of motion for an object which is moving in one direction, y, and has a constant acceleration, which in our case is minus 2.66. And we want to know the final position. So this is final position minus initial position. Remember that this is y minus y0. So we know initial velocity, we know time, we know the acceleration, we only need to substitute and solve for y. And you just substitute that and you get that delta y is equal to 2.68 meters. So initially the elevator is going up, it, there's an acceleration pointing down. What does it mean? Well, it means that in this period of time, the elevator is going up, even though the accelerator is, acceleration is going down, but that's because the initial velocity was positive going up. So it's decreasing its velocity. The velocity is going to be smaller and smaller until it will be zero and suddenly it will continue. Then it will change and will begin to go down. What's the velocity rate? At this time, well, we use again kinematics equations. We know that the velocity at any instant is going to be the initial velocity plus the acceleration times the time. And we know that the initial velocity, the acceleration, and we know that interval of time, which is two seconds, then we just substitute initial velocity 4 plus, and this is minus 2.66 multiplied by 2. And then we know that the velocity right at the moment is 1.32 negative meters per second. So the initial velocity is 4 meters per second, and this is the contribution due to the acceleration, and we get a velocity which is negative. So the, accel the elevator is going up, and it, start it stops and comes, begins to go down in that two second window. We could have calculated the velocity in a different way using a different equation of kinematics. Let's do that. So once once we know once we know the distance traveled we could have used this expression which relates acceleration, distance and velocity but doesn't include time. We don't need time but we need just velocity, initial velocity, we know it, we know delta y and we know acceleration then solve for this v. You substitute and you get of course the same result. Please verify that and see that it doesn't matter which expressions we are using we have to get to the same result.